Usually the tension in a debate or a candidate forum is between the opponents. Today, the first head-to-head -head matchup between Walker Stapleton and Jared Polis was slathered in even more awkward sauce because neither of them love the ballot issue that's being pushed by today's host, the Denver Chamber of Commerce. So with that in mind, our Marshall Zellinger got his popcorn ready. So I went to a governor's forum, and 70 seconds in, a political ad broke out. Because he represents the most radical, extreme departure uh, from Colorado. You just have a radical and extreme agenda. Another radical, extreme proposal. Yeah. A radical Republican departure. Walker Stapleton repeated the mantra of attack ads against Democrat Jared Polis. He often is attacking somebody he's not running against. I mean, I have a track record in Congress. I have the most moderate voting record of the Democrats in the delegation. The Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce hosted the forum, the same chamber that has contributed $250,000 to support Proposition 110. That's the ballot issue that would raise the state sales tax to fund road projects like redoing Interstate 270, reconstructing the often hit Spear Boulevard bridge over I-25, even adding bus rapid transit down Colfax. So surely the candidates would pander to the host and agree that 110 is a good idea. I've applauded the Denver Chamber's efforts, um, and I've said it's not what I would do, but I haven't taken a position on it. I want to spend our precious infrastructure money entirely on roads and bridges, bridges and roads. That's our acute need. Uh, I do not want to spend money on multimodal transportation. Let's move on. Health care. While Polis only talked about supporting universal health care when he was asked about it, both he and Stapleton were specific in how they want to improve coverage sooner. Young people are paying more for their home mortgages, I mean more for their health care than they are for their home mortgages or for their rent. Uh, we need to get higher deductible plans for them. We also want to improve access to cost reducting mechanisms like telemedicine uh, in our rural areas and uh, looking at the use of mobile health clinics for preventative care and better mental health services as well. Can you imagine spending a quarter million dollars on chips and dip and they're like, ah, I really don't like that. Uh, if you're a policy wonk for generic or generic specific answers, we've got more from that debate on 9news.com or the 9news app, Kyle. All right. Sounds good. Marshall, thank you. You know why I like you people? It's not just because you're beautiful. You are. It's also because you're smart. 16,000 Coloradans are smart enough to update their voter registrations on National Voter Registration Day. More than 2,800 updates here in Denver. So it's clear that you beautiful, smart people are just chomping at the bit to get your democracy on. Today is the last day that the blue book should be mailed out. I got mine a couple days ago, and it, I mean, it's thick. You could use that sucker as a doorstop. Don't forget to flip all the way back, though, to look at the judges, all right? The judges. If you ever end up in court someday, you don't want to appear before somebody who's known to be a hot mess express, but voters just couldn't be bothered to take away their gavel, all right? Colorado senators are taking predictable positions, as Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court seems like a done deal. The Senate advanced that nomination 51-49 to a final vote tomorrow. Only one Democrat, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, says he'll vote yes. Only one Republican, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, is going to vote no. Two wavering Republicans, Arizona's Jeff Flake and Maine's Susan Collins, say they will vote to confirm Kavanaugh. For a bizarre hour last night, the national media was in a frenzy, thinking that Colorado Senator Cory Gardner, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's right-hand man, was somehow an undecided swing vote on Kavanaugh. That would have been huge news, except it wasn't true. National reporters were seizing on a Denver Post article that seemed to suggest that Gardner had had a last-minute change of heart. Here's the deal. We've talked about this here. Gardner might have gotten real quiet about his support for Kavanaugh, but there was never a moment that it seemed in doubt. I bring this up not to criticize the Post or the national media that went into this frenzy. I bring this up because we watched the system work last night. Because other local journalists here in Colorado pushed back on our national peers, pointed out other reporting showing that Gardner was not really an undecided. We stopped fake news in its tracks, so social media might be good for something after all. Today, we got a major update in one of the few crime cases that we follow closely here on Next, the inexplicable killing of a child, the shooting of his family, and a road rage incident in Westminster. With the suspect in court today, we learned that police believe that the mother who was seriously hurt, that that day she was just trying to pull over for an emergency vehicle. They say the suspect would not let her over. Police say the suspect followed Megan Bigelow and her family to their dentist appointment, then started shooting. Her 13-year-old son was killed. Her 8-year-old son was hurt. Our next question comes from a viewer named Troy. Saw this today while riding my bike on the Cherry Creek Trail. So is Monaco Street the name of the parkway, or can roads be called both a street and a parkway? 
Troy, get you a road that can do both. Denver City Ordinance says some streets, boulevards, avenues, and drives are also parkways. Here's why that matters. The parkway designation means that extra rules can be put in place about what can be installed there. So they use that parkway designation to preserve the character and feel of certain areas. Claremont Street Parkway is another. Third, sixth, seventh, and 14th avenues are parkways in areas. And if you really want to nerd out on this stuff, we have the whole list on the next section of 9news.com. Time for your favorite. You've crossed a line. Chance to tell another Coloradan that they are literally out of line. And in this case, well, there are no lines. But there should not need to be lines because you know that ain't right. <laughs> you see, that not a good parallel park there. Just a couple more goes would have been absolutely fine. And apparently that vehicle was there like that for hours. Our ongoing search for the smartest kid in Colorado leads us to a fourth grader from Denver who already has a knack for the news. Catherine put together her own news rundown, like her own newscast, just for fun. Her parents shared it with us. So we got news, we've got weather, a daily joke, because like me, Catherine believes that, you know, a little levity is good. And then, and then there's sports. We don't do sports on next, but in Catherine's show, they, they, do, they do sports. Catherine, you have, the jokes, you have the jokes in the show, why? Keep things light? Yeah. Keep things happy? Yeah. Give people a reason to smile? Yeah. How about feedback? Do you like feedback? Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that, but we're going to keep you around for feedback. It's going to be lots of fun, trust me. A shortage of drivers these days has a connection to a local cidery's request. Got any apples to spare? I've never been to one, and I'm really excited. They love the game, but never imagined they'd go see postseason baseball this weekend. And Steve Steger has been doing some recon on our enemies. People from Wisconsin. Sure, they seem nice, what with their niceness and all, but don't be fooled. Next. Photography, as I say, is just one of the underpinnings of who I am. It keeps me going, and it's very crucial to my mindset as a, as a creative person. My name's Scott Wilson. I'm a Colorado landscape and wildlife photographer. So you can imagine we, we made our dream move to Colorado in July 2015, and it really was a very exciting time for our family. Children settled very quickly, my, my wife loves it here, and we really thought we'd made it. And then one year later, we had the, the awful news that um, I had stage four colon cancer, having had a, a colonoscopy, and, and that was the diagnosis. So for that moment, you feel like life has stopped. Of, of course, the reality is life hasn't stopped. Uh, and one of the, the things I've tried to develop through this is a really positive mindset, and that once you have had that diagnosis, the healing can begin. So after uh, surgery to my colon, I had about 13 centimetres removed and then started a 40-week programme of chemotherapy. And that's when my oncologist told me that one of the side effects of the drug that I was on is, is a very severe photosensitivity. Uh, so I basically had to avoid sunlight while I, while I was going through chemotherapy. And it, and it was like being punched twice. You know, you've got cancer, oh, and by the way, you can't shoot. And I thought, well, that, that's not how I want to live my life. So I just looked for different ways to shoot. And then over the course of a year, I found I'd built a portfolio and I talked to a really good friend about, you know, just, I've got this idea. Do you think this would work as a fundraising book? And he said, go for it. And uh, to date, we've managed to raise $36,000. The, the book's purpose, if you like, was more than raising money. It was actually getting people to talk about cancer. And it's just so, so fulfilling to know that my images and my story have in some small way helped people. Get to know the Johnsons five nights a week. How about I give you a hundred dollars? No, two hundred, and you agree not to have any more children. Ooh. Okay, that's a decision Video. I have. No, the no. A traditional family. I'm here to help. You're not mom. Where's mom? And an unconventional comedy. I think you look good for your age, Dad. Forty's not bad, right? <gasps> You're only forty. Good Lord, you've lived a hard life. Weekday starting at 5 p.m. on Channel 20. 
so many good stories in this state. People doing amazing things during very, very difficult times. This state is filled with those stories of overcoming adversity. morning sunshine blue skies temperatures in the mid 70s and then this snow out there at the rocky mountain national park a cold front pushing through delivering snow to the high country and gray skies and some rain across the boulder area and much of the front range you'll notice that rain in and around the i-25 corridor some good heavy pockets around boulder through broomfield over to Greeley, extending across the northeastern plains have seen just a couple of sprinkles here in downtown denver but wouldn't be surprised if we do see some more tonight overnight lows cooling off into the mid 30s one cold Cold front pushes through. We'll get a brief break midday, and then here we go for tomorrow evening. Scattered showers still with us late tonight, maybe even a few sprinkles early tomorrow morning around town with some patchy fog. And then midday, maybe a glimpse of some sunshine. Won't last long. Temperatures on the cooler side. And here comes round two with some more scattered rain showers rolling in right there around dinner time with more snow up in the high country. Daytime highs tomorrow much cooler in the mid 50s around the metro, the eastern plains, and even in the mountains, 40s and 50s. 50s this weekend looking cool unsettled and even in heading into early next week maybe a rain snow mix Monday night into Tuesday Kyle if you're heading to the Rockies game you're going to need to rock that purple parka seems sloppy Danielle all right thank you we've talked about Colorado and America's shortage of drivers how it's impacting all kinds of industries and that's why a bunch of guys were in my backyard picking apples this week no I'm serious though stem ciders says that they'll take your excess apples too they're just biding their time while they wait for truckers to bring them more apple juice to make cider with. So there's your driver shortage tie-in. So in the meantime, they're working on a community cider project. Morning, guys. It's, it's been a rare year for us on the front range. We've had a lot of fruit. It's been a really good year. My name is Eric Foster. I'm the CEO of STEM Ciders, and we're here today in Longmont picking apples. Look at this guy right here. We're going to make a cider together uh, with all the folks around the community that are willing to uh, offer up some of their fruit for this project. I grew up in Michigan. Apple picking is like a thing in Michigan. Uh, I'm Phil Cow. I'm the I'm co-founder of STEM Ciders. Cool. On my way to work every day, I kind of see these apples, apple trees from the side of the road, and I was like, man, all these apples apple trees are ripening right now and they're really full. We have no idea what the fruit is that we're getting. So we're, it's it's uh, it's trying to build a, you know, like a building without having any idea what the materials are that you're using. It's going to make it a very unique cider. I mean, different apples have different tannin levels and sugar levels and acid levels. So it's re we really don't know what we're going to get when we make the cider, but that's part of the fun. My name is Ian Caps. I'm the head cider maker at STEM Ciders. We are here in Lafayette, Colorado in our barrel aging room. We get most of our juice from uh, the Pacific Northwest and Michigan where they have a more reliable uh, crop source. So, you know, trucking in general for the country has been really challenging and for us specifically it's been a real challenge to be bringing juice in. It's, it's opened up our production schedule a little bit, which is kind of good in that we can go out and pick apples. I've been pleasantly surprised. It turns out there are a lot of people with apple trees in their backyards or in their front yards. They can't make, you know, 400 apple pies. Uh, so I think they're, they're more than willing to have somebody come out and do something fun with them instead of seeing them fall on the ground and just rot. Stem Cider says that this is the haul that they pulled off of my two apple trees in my backyard and picking it was hard work. I was exhausted watching those guys work. It was really, I mean, I'm breathing hard. Stem says this will not be any kind of money saver for them. Actually, it's going to be the highest cost cider that they have ever produced. They think this community cider project should be ready by March or April. Oh, folks, for October, it is hanging by a thread. One last shot and it's at home. Seven shots on the back of a very small vehicle, bumper stickers telling transplants to get out of our state. Our resident Colorado native would like to say something about that. And you don't often see me Fridays during football season. I'm here this evening to deliver one particular message. If life was like a t-shirt, you'll want to just wipe it so you can get a clean start. The one for David Wyatt yeah. would be made out of 100% guilt. I could be so much further in life right now if I didn't let, you know, uh, my addiction to alcohol get the best of me. His life ended her life. But apparently I drove drunk to the liquor store 
to get more liquor, and um, I wrecked. He survived. He found his way to a place called Street to Life. They don't just make t-shirts here, they make a difference in the lives of people like Wyatt. Homelessness, uh, coming off of drug and alcohol addictions, uh, coming out of prison. I just like things done right. Starting with a t-shirt that just might say regret. He said, I want to do everything right. I don't want to make mistakes. I know people don't always believe this, but I'm allowed to speak my mind on the show, and I'm allowed to showcase your thoughtful perspectives even if the bosses don't agree with them. That really does happen here. That's the strength of Next. It's important to hear things that we disagree with because lo and behold, we might change our minds. We also want Next to be a reflection of you watching at home. You're smart, funny, and you're unapologetically honest, even when it gets you in trouble. And that's what we hope that the show is as well. For about 20 years, I've been a part of the Junior Livestock Auction, and that's where the best of the best are auctioned off. You hear some amazing stories, hardworking kids from hardworking families. The mom and the family, difficult circumstances, they had to move in with a neighbor. This young lady living at the neighbor's house took the steer, raised it, worked hard all year long, won the grand champion steer, the prize, a record $140,000. That money is changing the life of the family. Need some support for your health goals? It's tough to do it alone. Whether you're trying to lose weight or just tracking your fitness goals, Nine Health has a convenient tool for busy people. Go to ninehealthfair.org and click eTools. Get the power of technology and the personal touch of a lifestyle coach. You don't have to do it all by yourself. For less than your weekly fancy coffee treat, you get a personalized plan right in your pocket. Go to ninehealthfair.org and click on eTools. Find the right program for you. Join the Denver Business Journal in recognizing Colorado's fastest growing companies. Celebrate the Fast 50 at Infinity Park on October 24th. Meet industry leaders consistently building their companies year after year. To register, go to denverbusinessjournal.com. Oh, the Rockies need to kick it in. But they're at least going to get to sleep in their own beds before they try to do this at home on Sunday. They were shut out 4-0 in Milwaukee today. Trail in the best of five series, 2-0 to the Brewers. So the Rockies are in a win or I guess you would say stay home scenario this weekend. A load of Milwaukee fans are going to be making their way here to watch game three. How much do we really know about these people from the cream city? I also didn't know it was called the Cream City. Our Steve Steger and photojournalist Ann Herb set out to see how well Coloradans know the enemy. Anybody want to play a little game? What do you know about Wisconsin? For the chance to win a fabulous prize of some cheese curds that we picked up at the store earlier today. Dinger is to the Rockies as blank is to the Brewers. Uh, that is... Fred, I don't know. Colonel Mustard? McMustache. Doesn't he kind of look like a Fred? He absolutely looks like a Fred. Look at that mustache. That's a Fred mustache. You mean Bernie? Bernie! What's a bubbler? Like a, like a bong? <laughs> You're probably not going to want to put this on the news. A water fountain that you drink out of. I don't even know if I want to win. <laughs> Do you like a cheese curd? No, they go fast. Are you sure? I'm positive. The highest point in Wisconsin is Tim's Hill. Okay. How tall is it? I'm going to guess that that is... We're going to go with 32 feet. 900 feet. Circle the TV shows that take place in Milwaukee. Is it this one? No. Happy Days. Are you sure it's not Game of Thrones? How about you get a cheese curd anyway? You know, I'm gonna pass. You're gonna... I was actually playing not to get a cheese curd. No, thank you. <laughs> Why does no one want my cheese curds? Yeah, he, would, he wouldn't love that, Catherine. Yeah, yeah, those people weren't having that, were they? She's still here, by the way. She's coming back. Game three of the series is Sunday afternoon at Coors Field, if necessary. Game four, Monday afternoon, also at Coors. Tonight, it is a special edition of That's Not How You Colorado begins with a car, and yes, indeed, there is a car underneath all the bumper stickers, seven total. Next viewer named Kaylin saw it at the King Supers at Kipling in Florida. Uh, listen, here's the deal. This goes beyond native pride into something that borders on rage. It's a Colorado thing. Native, fifth generation, don't Californicate Colorado. Welcome to Colorado, now go home. We got the message. I am not a native, so there is only so much I can say about this. But it gives me a chance to introduce someone you have heard me mention so many times, 
but has never appeared on Next until now. Our producer, Carrie Leary. I was born and raised here in Colorado. Bumper stickers like that make me sad. If you're a native or if you're not, we should never treat people like that. We should be compassionate, we should be welcoming, we should be open to people coming to explore our beautiful state. We should be known in Colorado for making people feel welcome, not the opposite. This is Carrie's last day with Next and with Nine News. She has been with us since day one. Strange thing about TV news is that we see each other daily, yet you rarely get to know the people who make this program possible. But thousands of you have talked with Carrie by email and by phone over the last two years. And if you have shared your story or a photo or your feedback with Carrie, you know what we know, that she is one of the smartest and kindest people you will ever meet. She loves Colorado and loves Coloradans, but she's setting off on a new adventure outside this strange world of TV news, a world in which the people you see are just part of the picture. But take it from the face of next, Carrie Leary has been its heart. So you can imagine how we feel today, but we are so excited for her tomorrow. We are Broncos. I'm a Broncos fan because we got the best team in the NFL. My whole life I've been a Broncos fan. Denver till we die. We bring the thunder. Broncos fans are the best. It's probably the most exciting thing that you could ever feel. They're the best team in the league, obviously. We got the best fans. The whole stadium shakes and everybody's jumping around and rooting and hollering. There's nothing like this crowd. Broncos fans will always stay loyal. We're looking forward to another Super Bowl win. This is Bronco country. We bleed orange and blue. We don't have to agree. Let's just talk. Next, weekdays at 6 on 9 News. There have been frightening things in the news lately, familiar things for many Coloradans. Check in with your family and friends. If you or someone you know needs mental health support or emotional help, it's available right this second. A real person ready to provide real problem solving. Call or text Colorado Crisis Services. Let's take care of ourselves and each other. Get to know the Johnsons five nights a week. How about I give you a hundred dollars? No, two hundred, and you agree not to have any more children. Ooh. Okay, that's a decision I yeah. have. No, the no. A traditional family. I'm here to help. You're not mom. Where's mom? And an unconventional comedy. I think you look good for your age, Dad. Forty's not bad, right? <gasps> You're only forty? Good lord, you've lived a hard life. Weekday starting at five p.m. on Channel Twenty. Need some support for your health goals? It's tough to do it alone. Whether you're trying to lose weight or just tracking your fitness goals, Nine Health has a convenient tool for busy people. Go to ninehealthfair.org and click eTools. Get the power of technology and the personal touch of a lifestyle coach. You don't have to do it all by yourself. For less than your weekly fancy coffee treat, you get a personalized plan right in your pocket. Go to ninehealthfair.org and click on eTools. Find the right program for you. We are Broncos. I'm a Broncos fan because we got the best team in the NFL. My whole life I've been a Broncos fan. Denver till we die. We bring the thunder. Broncos fans are the best. It's probably the most exciting thing that you could ever feel. They're the best team in the league, obviously. We got the best fans. The whole stadium shakes and everybody's jumping around and rooting and hollering. There's nothing like this crowd. Broncos fans will always stay loyal. We're looking forward to another Super Bowl win. This is Bronco country. We bleed orange and blue. October is a season of celebration for some students at Denver's North High School. Our Byron Reed shows us how their hard work and school spirit has taken them all the way to Blake Street. North High School, class of 1964. Larry Tannenbaum loves talking about his alma mater. Back in the day when it was just the original 1911 building. And he's very passionate about his job. I've always loved history and this is, you're sitting in history right now. He's the historian for North High School and he's responsible for highlighting the school's accomplishments. If you like history and, and things like that, this is a great place. Tannenbaum is a baseball fan. The, the Hartford Yard Goats. And he wants to make sure these athletes from the school's varsity softball and baseball teams know the history on 
on these walls and congratulate them on a job well done. Oh, we just got done with our third back-to-back -back city title, so doing pretty well as a program. These students are part of a program called Reviving Baseball in the Inner Cities, or RBI, and they thought they were going to hear words of encouragement from former Rockies outfielder Corey Sullivan. I uh, challenge you to continue doing this program. But instead... You know what? Let me make a call real quick. They all got surprised. Everybody is going to the game on You Friday. guys are all going. With tickets to Sunday's playoff game against the Brewers. I've never been to one, and I'm really excited. I mean, it's my senior year, so it's cool that I get to spend, like, a Rockies game with my, like, teammates. I know these playoff games are just going to be wild, and it's going to be rowdy, so I'm excited. The news is another achievement for these North High Vikings <laughs> and another milestone to mark for the school's historian. This was great. Had a great time watching. This is absolutely wonderful for those kids. For next, I'm Byron Reed. Girls, the girls softball team will throw out the first pitch Sunday and the boys baseball team will pitch Monday if there is a game four. Now here's Kyle with good news and feedback. Oh, Catherine, you did a fantastic job. Hey, listen, no Friday around here ends without your good news. Is that not right? Jeff Briggs told us his good news is that his four-year-old son has replaced their broken fishing rod. Time to get in some late season action. Amanda Evans told us her good news is just that her kids napped at the same time today. You know, to celebrate the little wins. And sometimes good news is, is seen. Celine Cockrell just moved to Colorado from Ohio. I hope she didn't see that car with all the bumper stickers. She says that she's just happy with this beautiful view outside of her apartment. And let's, let's grab a little bit more of your, uh, your good news tonight. Barbara says being a grandparent is the best job in the whole world. Being a retired grandparent makes it even better. Steve, you have good news. My good news is I got to work with Carrie Leary for three years. Three that years. Has been, that has been fantastic, fantastic good news. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe to the next YouTube channel and I'll buy you a beer. Am I actually buying them a beer? This could be a very poor idea. We need some terms and conditions. Offer subject to terms and conditions.